All right, guys. Welcome to the end of the year video. Um, 2022, right around the corner. If not, it's already happened. Um, <laughs> so, uh, just like last year, we're going to go over how many videos I did and the plans for 2022. Now, looking back at the year, it definitely doesn't seem like I did as much videos as I would have wanted to. And a lot of you know why that is. Um, the biggest reason is because um, I went back to in-person work compared to working remotely. So, um, beginning of this year, uh, I was working at home. Uh, I was streaming on Twitch a lot, daily, every day. Sometimes only taking one day off a week. And that was consistent for... I would say three to four months. Um, the Twitch following I had gained was pretty substantial. And some of you are still very hardcore dedicated viewers today, which I thank you. Um, as far as YouTube channel goes, um, I did six do by night um, podcasts. If you're not familiar for, with that, um, that was the podcast that I did with my friend Brett, where we watched a horror movie, and then did a podcast right after watching it. Um, me being a hardcore horror movie fan, and him being a, um, a newcomer to all things horror. Um, six very good episodes, a lot of hard work and dedication into those episodes. Unfortunately, um, Br Brett has decided that podcasting is not for him, unfortunately, and we will not be doing any more podcasts of that Hopefully, I can talk him into doing another one one of these days, but most likely not. Um, now, we did nine game reviews this year. Um, very solid game reviews, I'd like to think. Um, we did Kickmaster, uh, X-Files, which was a fun one. Um, Primal Rage, which just came out today of recording, December 26th and uh, a ton of other ones. Um, not as many game reviews as I'd like to do, but of course, with with work and you know personal life, it just is what it is at this point. Everything basically went back into the normal upload schedule as it was back when I was working full time in person at work uh, compared to being at home and being able to work and make videos at the same time. Um, anyway, I did six Aftermath game review videos. So I know for a fact that was um, Resident Evil Dead Aim, which was a great one. Um, like a two-parter of X-Files. I think three Fallout-related videos. Other things like that. Also very good videos, I think. Um, the biggest thing that I did this year was game or movie reviews, ten of them, um, all of the Pumpkinhead videos, which you guys got to enjoy watching me suffer through after the first one. I still never got myself around to doing the fourth one, um, and maybe this summer I'll get around to the fourth Pumpkinhead film. It was just after the third one, I couldn't pull myself around to doing uh, the fourth movie because the third one was so terribly bad. And it took me watching it twice <laughs> to actually make a game or make a movie review out of it because it was just so terrible that I felt like I wasn't going to be able to make it entertaining, but somehow still did. Um, I did one retrospective video, which was a test. Um, the retrospective video I did was on the God of War um, games 1 and 2 on the PlayStation 2. Um, I felt like that was a very good video. I'd like to do more videos like that in that vein where I tell stories about a game, look back at a game, but not make it a full-fledged game review because, um, let's face it, as the years go by and there's more and more YouTubers a dime a dozen, I don't even consider myself a YouTuber, but people make videos on YouTube, um, game reviews are a dime a dozen. And what can I say about the God of War games that hasn't been said already, um, aside from telling my personal stories with the game and other games like that that are very, very popular. So, 
hopefully in 2022, I'll be able to make more videos like that um, since you guys seem to enjoy that type of video. Um, I did two unboxing videos. Um, I know for a fact there's going to be more unboxing videos in 2022 um, because of the first four figure statues that I ordered of Pyramid Head from Silent Hill. But the ones that I did this year was the Doom Marine Helmet unboxing, which got a lot of positive feedback. It's still like one of the only three videos made on that helmet. And after watching the other two videos that were made on it, I'm not tooting my own horn, but... I was the only one that actually made it entertaining, not just filmed on my cell phone and said, it's good. <laughs> um, and other than that, oh, the Spawn um, unboxing video um, for the Spawn standee from the 90s that was a, a store display. Um, a very cool video that was such a pain in the ass. I built that in summer when I got it. And... The summers here in Sacramento are like 100 plus a day, so it was really hot in my office. I started out fine and then was sweating my ass off by the end to build it, and it was taller than me, which is, it's like 9 feet tall almost or whatever. Not in the office right now, obviously I had to take it down um, because there's just not enough room in this office. Um, I also went to the SAC Gamers Expo. In December I wasn't able to make a video on that this year um, I didn't find very many games I mean I I saw a lot of games don't get me wrong I saw a lot of games there unfortunately as I've talked about in the past game prices for old games that I grew up with have gotten so um, over done in price it's like skyrocketed in value compared to how it was even the last sack gamers expo it's insane um i have said many times on stream that i'm looking for the clock tower games um one two and three because i don't own them and i saw all three of them there <laughs> i bought one game and it was clock tower three i bought that for 60 bucks um complete but Clock Tower 1 was going for like 300 and then Clock Tower 2 on PS1 was going for like $600. And I said, fuck that. <laughs> um, as awesome as those games would be to own, there's no fucking way in hell that I would ever pay that much money for one game. Especially when I can just... Um, play the ROMs, you know, um, there's there's no uh, there's no way that I would ever pay that much money for a fucking physical copy of a game. And I've said this multiple times, unless it's an NWC cart in which it'd be awesome to own, but I could turn it over for much more for that, much more in value than I ever would uh, a Clock Tower game. Um, so yeah, I bought one game at the SAC Gamers Expo, um, it was a very awesome expo, though. I got to meet Pat, Danny S. Punk, and Jay from the Game Chasers, one of my two favorite YouTube channels that I still watch, you know, on a weekly basis. Um, I own their DVDs. It was very, very cool. Um, uh, one of my viewers, um, Jonathan, of the channel, who also made it to last the two years ago of Sack Gamers Expo to meet me, was there. He hung out with me. Um, the retro hunters were there. It was it was a really cool cool expo this time around compared to the first time. It was just that everything was so exorbitant in price that it kind of defeated the purpose of even kind of going aside from hanging out with people. Um, I already knew the game prices were going to be extreme, but I didn't think that they were going to be, you know, three times the price of what they were last time, and that was only two years ago. Um, I know I passed on a Clock Tower 2 at the last SAC Gamers Expo because it was 300 bucks, and now it's 600 Fuck that. Um, other than that, though, I mean, I really hope that 2022 um, brings more content. Uh, I'd like to be able to spend more time streaming again, getting back to that, and more time making videos. It's just that 
with work and personal life, as I've said before many times, it's a, a, a very fine line when it's a balance of when you find time to make videos. Um, movie reviews and unboxings and things like that are easy to do, in my opinion. Um, that's why they're so um, bloated on YouTube in general, because all you do is sit in front of a camera and talk. Um, the game reviews obviously take a lot more time. You write a whole review, um, you edit the whole review, and everything else that you want to add in to make it good. Um, for example, the Primal Rage video that came out today, um, I started, I, I wrote that video a week, the week before Christmas, and then waited until I had time, which was today, December 26th, and then started the video in the morning, editing it, and it took all the way until an hour ago, which was 9 o'clock at night, to finish editing it the way I wanted it. So obviously it takes a lot of goddamn time. Even for me, who's been doing it now for almost a decade. That's another thing. We're on the nine year mark of the channel. It's fucking insane. That means next year it'll be a decade on YouTube. Um, crazy. Um, I started the Patreon thing. The, the Patreon thing was going really well. I was doing weekly writings, um, exclusive content, um, and people were enjoying it. Um, I don't know. It, it almost seems like the more and more I think about YouTube, it's like, am I reaching that point where it's time to, to move on? But at the same time, it's like, I'm having too much fun and, um, there's just so many more games that I'd like to make videos on that I own and that I have a passion for and nostalgia for. So, yeah, I'm probably not going to be stopping anytime soon, most likely. I'd probably, if you were to ask me right now in 2021, the gauge of the channel as far as steady game review content goes, I'd probably give it another three years. Um, so, uh, ask me again in three years where I see the channel going. <laughs> but yeah, that's like my year in review of wrap up. It's not as, as exciting or as um, uh, plentiful in content as the year before, but we all know what happened the year before with the pandemic and most of, most of us were at home. So I spent that most of that time trying to be productive instead of being depressed. So uh, yeah, anyway guys, that's my year-end review. Um, hopefully I can pump out one more video, one more movie review before the year is over. But if I don't, um, I will see you in 2021 with the new game reviews. Um, have a happy new year. Thanks for all the support this year. And uh, yeah, we're almost at 3,000 subscribers. Almost a decade on the platform, which is fucking insane. And uh, yeah. Anyway, guys, I'll see you next time.